put into place the idea of complexity science and, and, and so forth, in particular the, 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 the initial talk. So I'm a physicist, and uh, what I try to do uh, at CAS, at the Center for Advanced Spatial Analysis, is to look at urban systems from the perspective of complexity. And of course, this is one of those disciplines that you cannot work on your own. You really have to work with, uh, with the geographers, with economists, and all sorts of people who really understand the details of what's going on. And what we are trying to do as physicists is mainly to um, put a methodology in order to unveil the patterns that are out there, right? So, so, so this is more or less um, the motivation of uh, why uh, uh, um, I'm in this, uh, in this field and uh, with the humility that it's only one small methodology that one can uh, uh, put together with other people. So the main idea um, that I want to bring uh, to you today is that uh, when we're talking about the industrial strategy and support, we're talking, as uh, Penny introduced it to us, we're talking about regions and uh, many times we're talking about regions that are ill-defined. And we cannot have uh, one definition of regions that covers all the different problems that we want to, 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 to look at. So basically, what do we mean by, by, by regions and what do we mean by strategies that are, that, that are going to be introduced in one place and will be able to spill over to other places? How are they going to spill over and how they're going to interrelate between the other places so that they are effective? So most of the time we're thinking about regions as places that have very strong linkages within them and weaker linkages with other definitions of what we will be uh, uh, thinking about with respect to, 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 to regions. And of course these linkages are going to be related to the problem that we want to talk about. So is it a societal problem? Is it an economic problem? How are we going to define those? And so this link will vary and won't be uh, a universal. So this is very important. So I'm going to be talking about this link as the connectivity of the system, right? So if uh, one thinks uh, uh, about these things, okay, I understand. So if we want to talk about communities, maybe we want to talk about identity, right? So we're talking about identity and we think about this linkage in terms of identity. But which scale do you take? Where do you stop? Because of course you don't have a zero and one thing. Everything is fuzzy and not everybody uh, 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 will have the same values and so forth. So where do you stop and which is the level, the strength of this connectivity that you're going to be considering the system in order to say I'm going to separate these two things, okay? So this, is, this relates to the scale and of course we can think uh, um, about uh, complexity science in this way in which you will have a set of elements, as uh, was very nicely introduced at the beginning, um, set of elements that are going to be interacting, creating an emergent behavior that then this new, at the macroscopic level, will also be interacting and creating a new emergent behavior, right? And this basically leads to a hierarchical structure. So what I'm going to try to introduce today is how can we take a specific linkage and uncover a hierarchical structure in the system that might be useful for our policy and how then if we want to affect one region, which are going to be the other bits that are going to be affected by this specific policy at that level. So um, the motivation um, with respect to using um, distance here. So <coughs> what sort of linkage are we going to use? So if we think about the, the UK, we, we're thinking about countries that uh, 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 are constructed, cities that are constructed because they need to trade. So there are places, places connect to places because there is an initial trading uh, 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 necessity and then these other places have a, a stronger linkage and need to trade further away and further away. And of course, the speed of interaction and all that is going to be what's going to be defining how far away you can go into the system. But if we think about this initial uh, idea of how communities form, then we can take the street networks as our basis of how to understand, for example, in this case, the UK as a, 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 a system, an <coughs> urban system, that can be looked at in terms of a hierarchical structure. So um, I'm very happy that uh, at the beginning, uh, you introduced this idea of, uh, of uh, how to bring complexity and, and forest fires and so forth into microeconomics. So um, what I'm going to introduce here is this idea that if the linkage is going to be given 
by a model of uh, uh, connectivity as if you were spreading a message in the system. So in this case, you're spreading a fire in a forest and how this fire is going to spread to the next tree depends on how close together the trees are and the intensity of the fire. And we can think as well in terms of diseases, how a disease is going to spread to the next person according to if it's airborne, how long it can live and how close these, these individuals are. And this process, we know it in physics in terms of a percolation process, right? So we're spreading a message in the system or we are connecting to the, to the, to, to the other individuals through trade or you can go into the more abstract realm, you are connecting uh, spaces in terms of, uh, of uh, specific objects that are being traded. Okay? So in this, in this sense, basically, if uh, this individual here has been infected or wants to communicate with this other person, with any other person, it will only be able to communicate if it is a specific distance L. Okay? It cannot communicate longer. Or the virus cannot spread longer than that because it dies. So it will spread the message to this other individual, and then this other individual will be able to contaminate this other two and so forth. And this is how the message will be able to spread into, into the space. So this is more or less the model that I'm going to take. And so how it's going to happen, I'm going to take the street network over there, and I'm going to say that it's going to spread through the street. Okay. Um, so what, what we are uh, um, idealizing in this case, our toy model is take a street intersection and consider the street intersection as if it was a tree to which the message was uh, uh, um, spreading in terms of a fire or you can see it as an infected person that is going to infect any other individual. So when we do this, this is what happens <coughs> in the UK. So it's interesting to see that the colors represent uh, um, the size of the cluster, so red is the biggest cluster. So here we, we have almost the whole of the UK. Of course, we have an island, so this is a geographical accident. Um, we have a, 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 so let me play this again, I don't know when I can go back. And I'm only presenting the largest clusters, okay? So the things that are not colors, not because they're empty, it's just that they are not there. And what you observe, so when we have this, this, this uh, uh, phenomena of percolation, you have a component that is spreading a fire, so you want, you want to get rid of the fire and you know that you cannot save all the trees, right? <coughs> so what you want to know is which is that component that is, most, is going to kill most of the trees. So you want to know which is the largest connected component. This one that you really want to, to concentrate your water on to put the fire down so that it doesn't spread the whole thing. But there are going to be other small clusters of trees that are going to die. You cannot save them all, but you want to save the forest, okay? So we're interested in this process. We're interested in the largest one, the one, the red one that spreads and covers everything. But you might have realized that in this exercise, when I run this movie, the red changed positions. It was here, and then later on it was there, okay? This indicates that we have a multiplicity of transitions because we have a hierarchical system, okay? We don't have a one central system that we only have one thing going on. We have a multiplicity of transitions, which is a hierarchy. It indicates a hierarchy. And we're when we're talking about hierarchies, we're talking about organization of the space, OK? And of course, you say, well, of course, we know that we're in cities, and cities are in regions, and then these regions may make a country. So we can see straight away <coughs> that we can understand an urban system in terms of a hierarchical organization. But what I'm trying to say here is that this hierarchical organization arises from the way we have constructed our infrastructure, okay? And this infrastructure, we have constructed it because of our need to interact from one place to another. So in this case, these transitions, I'm only showing the transition of the largest connected component, and then you can see cities at the very uh, uh, initial transitions, and then you start to see regions, okay? And you start to see <coughs> something that looks like uh, uh, the Northern Powerhouse that doesn't quite work because we have Newcastle that is quite far away, okay? So, uh, and then you see the separation between England and Wales and Scotland. So. This, this is a separation in terms of the infrastructure. I'm only taking the points of intersection, okay? This is one country, maybe it's going to be too soon, but at the moment, <laughs> it's one country, and we see that even after years and years of being the one country, we, we still have a footprint in our space indicating that these two behave more or less as not a very unified 
entity, okay? Of course, only in terms of the road intersections. So if we wanted to understand how this is organized in terms of hierarchies, then we can plot it in this way, which I think gives a, 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 a better understanding. So you have Britain as the model cluster that all of the sort breaks in two parts. So you have Scotland and England and Wales. And then as you continue, it will break into other ones, okay? And so this is the very well-known north-south divide that, that emerges only from the infrastructure of the three networks. And we also saw it in your, in your plot with respect to, to, to the industries that were going on the, with, with the economic index that you were plotting. And here you have uh, 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 other ones that appear. But the importance here is when you look at this tree, the way to read this tree is that if I'm going to then say at a regional level, I'm going to implement a policy in this model cluster here that is going to be affecting Liverpool, Leeds, and so forth, this is going to be so far away to London, which is over here. So how many steps I have to go up in order to be part of this one, okay? So this is a way to more or less see the, co the cohesiveness of the, of the space and how in terms of policy, how things are connected and how one thing is going to affect another one if they make part of the same mother cluster. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult, right? So for example, uh, uh, here you have Newcastle, okay? Newcastle is over here. How is it that it can be part of the same system if we were only to take into account the road infrastructure? So of course, here's where you say, ah, but you're not taking the real transport, which is the train system and so forth. And of course, here comes a big question of HS2, HS3, and how everything will, <laughs> will be able to connect and so forth. But at the moment, if we only look at the road infrastructure, it's just so far away in order to be able to be part of the same system, okay? So, so the main idea that started back in, 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 in 2015 is let us boost the economy of the north by introducing, by boosting the connectivity of the system and then introducing you know, a stronger transport into, into this area, right? Um, and as I show you, uh, why, why is it that, that one thinks in those terms, in terms of boosting the economic strategy with respect to bringing a, a transfer into place? Because of course, depending on your physical position, oh, yeah, that's so depending on the physical position in your space is the accessibility to opportunities that we're going to have. And in addition, the linkages and the possibilities of mixing the different products and so forth, right? So, um, I'm part of this uh, project called the Urban Dynamics Lab that is trying, I mean, back in the day when the project started was a pro-Brexit, and so of course the main question was how can we rebalance the economy in order to make sense of a more uh, 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 um, well, balanced UK and not everything concentrated in, in, in London and so forth. So as part of this system, we started with this idea of let us look everything most of the time we're thinking about agglomeration economies, right? And we think about these agglomeration economies taking place in the clustering of economic activities such as firms. So let us think about what is going on in the space with respect to uh, 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 the economic activities that take place. And in this sense, as uh, um, has been introduced previously, of course, there isn't a single way, there isn't a, a single way in which you can cluster firms because it depends on what is it that you <coughs> want to, 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 to look at how you're going to cluster. So do you want to cluster things in terms of, uh, of, of, of having uh, similar products and then you will have competition and so, and so forth? Do you, do you want to have complementarity? And so you will be clustering things with respect to complementarity. Are you thinking uh, about uh, um, skills? So how the same individual can go and work in the other industries around with the skills that they have, even though the, 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 the industries might not be that similar, but the skills will be the same and so forth. So there isn't a single way in order to see how to look at these agglomeration economies. So what we're trying to see, and most of the time this relates to, are we clustering with respect to the similarity between industry or the geographical proximity? Because maybe what we want to look at is how this space is changing and what are the main firms that normally the main industry that tend to be in, uh, in, in, in this space. 
So um, many people have worked on that, and of course uh, um, you have papers like these ones. I mean, this is this is a really nice paper because um, it took uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, data, so you could see how the same individual was working in all these different places. So you could really link the industries <coughs> today to the people. So of course this is this is really nice uh, 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 um, kind of data to work with, and in this case you you, you can think about this uh, industrial clusters in which what you take into account is not only the, um, the geographic proximity, but also the types of industry. Most of the time, these things happen, if you read this, this kind of papers, in a two-step way. You cluster by industry, and then you cluster by proximity, or you cluster by proximity, and then you cluster by industry, right? So um, what we try to, to, to do in this uh, other paper is to say, okay, <coughs> Let us look at the spaces and the evolution of the spaces with respect to their proximity, but also their, sim their industrial similarity. So we took into consideration the zip codes of the firms um, and see how the zip codes of the firms in one space relate to the zip codes of, of, the, of the firms in another space and how close they are together as well with respect to distance. Okay. But then comes the next question, which is the one that we started with and, and we saw at the beginning. Which scale? So when you think about these agglomeration economies, it's uh, is again the same thing. At which level you're going to say it's close enough? Which distance are you going to take? Which similarity? What amount of similarity? Because it's not going to be exactly the same thing, right? And so instead of taking only one uh, a threshold, what we try to do is to look at, again, at different thresholds and to see how you can have this, the same as you had for the UK, this nested structure of having a mother cluster with the different cities as part of one region. Could we look at the space in the same way with respect to the way the economic activities are uh, uh, distributed? So uh, in order to do that, um, uh, so this is a project that was uh, mainly started by Clementine Cotinou, um, uh, the first author of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, paper, who is a geographer and also uh, uh, an economist. And um, she gained access to, 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 to the ONS uh, uh, Secure Lab, where they have um, data. So most of you are like, yeah, I know that one. It's a pain, right? So because you have to go there, unless you, you manage to, to convince them that you, your, your desk is secure enough. You have to go there, run the models, and then if it doesn't work, you go back and you go back and, 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 uh, and so forth in their computers that after an amount of time, it, it runs out and uh, you have to do it again and, and, and optimize the code. Anyway, so, so what you have access to is uh, 20 years of data of the firms with their IDs, so where they move in the space, and with their zip uh, 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 code, okay? So you know the industrial classification of these firms and where they are, right? So we did this for, for, for London, and so the idea is that we take LSOAs, which are the units of geography in, uh, in the UK. Of course, you have smaller and bigger. Um, we, took, we took this in order to be able to, 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 to look at census data as well. And then we created a network in which the spaces, so you see here what I'm clustering is the spaces, okay? Why? Because um, one of the main things with the ONS is that, of course, these industries need to be anonymous, so you have to aggregate at least 10 and so forth. So, so, so we use LSOAs in order to ensure that this was the case. And um, we will create a link that will have a link between all the, the different spaces, right? So, of <coughs> course, the link that you create between the different spaces relates to your first question and the sort of, uh, of problem that you're looking at, right? So are you looking about the relatedness in product space, skill relatedness, or what sort of thing you're looking at? And so this link won't be one thing, it could be many other things. In our case, what we did is that, okay, let us take the proximity between these two things and the, 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 the similarity. But the proximity, instead of giving by spatial proximity, we said, let, let us take into account the time it takes you to go from one place to another, right? So, so as opposed to the, to, to the initial exercise in which we took the street network, we took the public transport network, okay? So, and the time it takes you to go from one LSOA to another one. And this is part of this uh, 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 project, which is the, the, the quant project that uh, 
Michael Batty and uh, develop at Casa, that the idea is that you shop the system, you introduce an infrastructure, how people are going to, to go, how people are going to be distributed in space in terms of home and work, right? So this is the idea behind this kind of model that you can, in real time, do the shopping to the system and then see how it changes, right? So I'm only using here, I'm not shocking anything, I'm just using the time, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the time it takes, the origin and destination travel times, okay? Using only public transport. So this is work done by Richard and Milton. Mm -hmm. So then what I do is that I create uh, uh, um, a link that is a function of the two. So I'm not doing one and then the other, I'm constructing a function that is a, a copula, um, between <coughs> these two. So joint the probability function between the time it takes you to go from one place to another and the similarity of these two places. And so you can think about the same process in which you build from the local uh, 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 strong connectivities to the weaker ones. You can also have everything being connected and start cutting the weak links, okay? You can think about uh, 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 this process in, in, in this way, and so you can see how the communities are going to emerge as you start cutting the weak links. In this case, weak means not very close in terms of uh, 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 travel time and sim industrial similarity. And of course, we don't take only the one threshold, but we take several ones and then we see how the thing uh, uh, advances. And so we were able to do this for, we, we are comparing here for 2007 and 2014 in order to see how the financial crisis affected more or less this nested structure of clusters. And um, of course, one of the things you see straight away that is different, the, the transport network is the same. We didn't change the transport network. So here, the only thing that changes is those types of industries that, that belong to the LSOs. And then you can see how Canary Wharf became a cluster that didn't exist before, and also Stratford, given the, 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 the only paper. And so overall, um, what I'm trying to say with, uh, with uh, this talk is that instead of having a single static configuration of the space, what you end up is with a nested structure, with a hierarchical organization. And so here you can see, uh, 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 for example, each of these in order to understand each of these thresholds. So you, you take a threshold and you see the very small clusters that appear in the space. Temple, for example, is a very interesting case because Temple, everything is cluster run, but Temple is a differentiated cluster because of the types of activity that only happen there, the lawyers and so forth, which is very specialized as opposed to the other spaces that are more mixed. And so maybe in this case, when you think about this, you can think about isolation and maybe non-resilience, but in this case, it's the opposite. You, you see that this cluster, as the financial crisis happened from one to the other, this one remained very, very strong in its position, okay? So it turned out to be a resilient cluster in, uh, in, 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 in this sense. And so you can then look at uh, uh, the specific um, types of industries that you want to, so for example, here, if you focus on knowledge-based industries, you can see Canary Wharf being very far away from what is the London tech city, uh, uh, the, the, the FinTech and so forth, and Canary Wharf only having like the banking system and so forth. After the financial crash, this one moves from being very far away to the rest to entering now uh, uh, the FinTech uh, kind of industry and so forth. And so um, we haven't done this yet, but the idea is to then compare how the trees change from one place to another. And so how to understand the structure of the space from these changes in the structure of, uh, of uh, these trees. And you can do the same, of, of course, for retail and so forth. So um, in order to conclude, basically regions are not uniquely defined, as we were saying. <coughs> they need to adapt it. You know, we need to redefine and to think about what are cities, metropolitan areas, what sort of definitions we are going to be taking, and what is the impact of having a measure with respect to the definition that we're taking and if we're building links and we want to increase the connectivity through infrastructure development, how these really are going to be affecting uh, 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 the linkages between these spaces. What sort of, uh, of uh, and, and I think this, this relates <coughs> very nicely with, uh, you know, with, with uh, what Penny is doing at the moment in terms 
to understand which are the linkages that need to be boosted and how then they're going to develop the strategy in order to boost the right sort of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, um, interactions that need to take place to have a higher um, uh, economic index. And of course, if we think about knowledge spillovers and this sort of thing, how things are connected into this abstract space, so it doesn't have to be the physical one, but the, the, the sort of one of how things are going to be uh, uh, related or not. And finally, so this is the team of people with whom I work for, for uh, these uh, projects mainly. So it's Hatna, who was also at CASA, who is now a geographer at, uh, well, he has always been a geographer, but he's at NYU. Uh, Clementine, geographer, but also uh, uh, economist, and Michael Batti, the founder of CASA, and um, Carlos, an architect. Thank you. Thank you.